Yeah, hello, welcome everyone. Uh, listen, instead of going through every single chart, you just pause this and you can go take a look at monthly charts and the conditions of what's going on. The topic is, are consumers bought out? And maybe that's why the market's a little overbought. Uh, today, Oracle gave earnings and said, you know, things are all right, but forward guidance is a little bit of an issue. Stocks like DraftKings, the China uh, ETF, FXI, has been in a monthly sell signal already. Zillow Group, which is really ironic because we're supposed to be in this big housing bubble boost. Uh, Zillow has already been in a sell signal and trading lower. Alibaba, of course, you all know Jack Ma's disappeared or hiding or, you know, regardless. Alibaba in the downdraft. Netflix in a monthly sell signal. Cardinal Health in a sell signal. CarMax, there's a shortage of cars, but maybe they can't sell cars or there's not enough cars to sell either way. It's a recession. If you don't have a product or you do have a product, if there's no one buying and no transactions, you're not making money. Walmart is selling off. Dollar Tree is selling off. Big Lots sold off. Now, those are already in sell mode from a monthly perspective from a prior month. And uh, if you look at what's going on, Yum Brands, Disney, Under Armour, Nike, Lithia Motors, Kohl's, J.B. Hunt, a trucking company, these are stocks that will be presenting if they were at today's prices. That's Wednesday, again, July 16th at 12.30 p.m. If these stocks close here at the end of the month, this is not good. Uh, it, it shows there's going to be some maybe follow-through weakness going into July. Alaskan Air, JetBlue, Penn National Gaming, which was a big favorite earlier this year, Las Vegas Sands, and Baidu. These are big names that Mattel, for example, Home Depot, Lowe's, big, big consumer names. Whirlpool, the uh, makers of appliances, Best Buy. I mean, quite frankly, how many big screen TVs can we put in our home, right? Cummings, uh, John Deere, which is a surprise for many, many, many months. Everyone's been saying you got to get in John Deere. And then finally, again, Tesla. So I just wanted to bring that to your attention. Let's take a quick look at some current trades right now. This is the Bitcoin page. We just created this Bitcoin um, brand new algo strategy for the summer. We've had GBTC since uh, our 60-minute model over here. But because of the nature of the intraday volatility, we created a 15-minute uh, Bitcoin futures model, which has done pretty well. And currently, it's already short. As you can see, two contracts. What does this really mean? Um, Every time there's a position on, it shows it on the board there. Negative two, it shows you where it entered, the connect the dots that were exited. Um, it uses a trailing stop function. This is where it's currently short. This is the uh, initial stop on the initial trade. And now that orange line is the trailing stop. So it, it, one of two things, uh, either it's gonna continue to provide profits if Bitcoin goes down, or it'll get stopped up and stopped out and lock in a profit. This is GBTC. Now, the algo room that we created has had Bitcoin trading in, and we've had that in our algo room for now three years, nothing new. Uh, this particular model has done well, except for um, it has had a couple choppy trades in here. And then, as you can see, this is a loser. If it's blue, it's a winner on this model right here. If it's red or fuchsia, it's a loser. This is a green line, connect the dots, obviously is a winner. So we color code them so that we know the difference between uh, winners, losers, futures, and ETFs. Uh, the performance summary on this, we'll bring that into your guideline here. You can see the equity curve on our 60 minute model is, well, it just made a new equity high. It hasn't really come off that equity high. So that's a pretty dynamic uh, performance. As you can see, January of 17, this is a cumulative total of the profits on that trade. It's unbelievable. So anyway, uh, what do we see going forward in the, mar in the market from here? Um, in the ES, a couple things that I see. Uh, first off, we have, this is our day trade E-mini model. Uh, we've already rolled into September. The 60 minute was short. It covered a short this morning. It's going lower. That's okay. It's, uh, you know, it's done fine. It's ahead of the Fed. We're uh, sitting here on a 15 minute model flat. The five minute was short, just covered a short. The VXX was short. It covered its short position and it initiated a new short position and it'll get stopped out. This is a big winner too. What am I looking at at the market right now? From a discretionary position trader, um, 
be honest with you, we're looking at, at puts in SPY. As far as an algorithmic trader, uh, two things we tell people. If you don't want, if you've had a good run in the market, let your system run. If you're just starting a, uh, initiating a new algo position and you're going to step in front of the freight train with a Fed meeting with increased volatility, uh, having stops and futures and a leveraged product, you could see a market run up maybe six, seven handles. A handle is a, a full point. There's four ticks per point. So if you figure you could get a seven point move, a 28 tick move against you, stop you out and then watch the market. No one wants that. So possibly this isn't the greatest environment for algo trading, a short term five minute model. Just throwing that out there. All right. As far as the market is what we've been talking about on YouTube, there's a lot of divergences in the market. There's a lot of things that are unwinding right now. And we're more looking at defensive plays here. We got some put option spreads for Spider and the June 30th. I, I recommended and tweeted that out. Um, as you can tell, we're starting to see the Russell. Uh, let me get to that page too. If you've been watching the YouTube videos, I've been active. I haven't been active in a long time, but you know, quite frankly, uh, we've been busy. I mean, bottom line. But I wanted to share this with you because I think it's important that we're starting to see a rollover in the breadth of the market, the advanced decline. We're already in a daily sell signal in the Russell. I did this video yesterday for you. Volume is, uh, you know, falling off the wayside. The McClellan oscillator, modified person McClellan oscillator is breaking. The breadth of the market now zigzagged with lower high, lower low. Not good. Dow as well. Uh, there's no volume in this downdraft. That's uh, one of the only issues except for this volume model. This volume model suggests that volume is tapering lower. On balance, volume may give people a false sense of security. So at this point in time, I would just say, listen, uh, side with caution. Why catch a falling knife? If anything, we're starting to see some really heavyweight stocks in the consumer discretionary sector, as I just pointed out. Home Depot, for example, Netflix, for example, start to sell off. And we might get that follow through. We've also noted to you guys that the, uh, besides transportation selling off, industrials have been selling off, but financials have been selling off. And that, my friends, is uh, a relative uh, weakening condition to the market where you just can't ignore that. So if we take a look at a stock like Citibank, for example, um, this uh, generated a weekly low close doji last week and has follow through right now. Look at the monthly engulfing pattern. This is Citi. Everyone said they had to be long the bank stocks. Well, guess what? Sell it when everyone bought, wants it, buy it when no one wants it. And here's JP Morgan. The street loves JP Morgan. Let them have it. Morgan Stanley, they bought E-Trade. Hey, we made money with this trade earlier this year. It's actually holding up one of the better stocks that's held up. And I want you to just pay attention more closely to the monthly and the weekly. If you look at where the moving averages are and the departure from the means, there's this little term called regression to the means. And we're starting to see that start to evaporate the froth in the market. So all the Fed has to do right now is say, you know what, we're worried about inflation. And this thing comes back down. So the puts that we recommend, or at least the put spreads in the spider, I mean, they didn't not make a lot of sense. They made a lot of sense up in here. Let's take a look at the condition of this S&P market. According to my volume indicator, no one's been buying this rally. And so it's therefore subjected and it's vulnerable for decline. I mean, where could we get down to? Maybe 405, maybe 410 in the next week or two. With an option expiration, we've seen stranger things happen in one week period of time. May not remember this, but back in May, uh, we saw, look at that range, uh, over 18 uh, S&B points, almost 19 point range. That happened in almost less than three days. 19, what would we go to if we went 19 points right straight back down? Still be bullish, but it would hurt anyone long up here. So a quick trade to the downside, less theta. The event is for the end of June. Uh, the 415, 410 spreads were going for like 60 cents. I think that's uh, one of the things we recommend in the live trading room. In fact, I know it is because uh, we actually tweeted that out too. So bottom line, I, I wouldn't say that um, the market is completely dead, but today there is rotation, there is defensive positioning going on, and the market is, is, is 
at the very least, let's just say, vulnerable for a correction in the market that not many people expect to, to see. Anyway, that's my message. I just wanted to give you case proof of point. How are the person's indicators working? What do they suggest? Uh, what stocks have been generating or are at least selling off? And one of the last thing I want to share with you that we talked about in our live trading community today, which and all week actually, which I think is also an unusual observation is for new fresh sell signals, we've not seen this column fill in this great. The Dow Jones Industrial Average giving a weekly sell signal. That is, if Friday it closes here or lower, you're in a sell signal. Why take a chance? Uh, the gold miners, the junior miners, it just disappeared with the little sell signal, but that threshold was already crossed this morning. Uh, look at the materials, look at the airlines, uh, look at steel sector. You can see all of these right now are warning. Now, again, a flashing signal with an arrow on Wednesday on a weekly chart does not say sell it. It says that if we close here, we're generating a weekly sell signal on Friday, which is the end of the week. So for new people out there that don't understand warnings and flashings and the difference between a daily chart and a weekly chart, a weekly chart doesn't conclude until Friday. And if it's Wednesday, this is just a precursor or warning. So if we're getting warnings, if, if it gets worse, then you'll see maybe more pressure in the market. That's why having small protection makes sense right now in this marketplace. Rather than Friday's option expiration, June 18th, why not go out to June 30th and give the market some time, which if a correction lasts for two weeks, you're going to be participating in the bulk of the move. That's the message that I wanted to, to uh, make mention. Here's the materials. Here's the financials. Here's the industrials. How in the heck does anyone think that the market's going to be able to rally with those big heavyweights? Amazon can't carry the whole weight of this move. Apple can't carry the whole weight of the move. And which, by the way, this is transports. The IYT was in a sell signal last week. So we have more sell signals. We had some last week. Here are that list. If you look here, we have Bitcoin in a cell, gold in a cell, housing in a cell. I, ITB is the housing sector ETF. It's been in a cell for multiple weeks. You have transports. You have regional banks. Those were already in a cell. Now let's add to the list currently. These are adding to that list. Staples, industrials, financials, materials, steel, airlines, materials, junior miners, and the Dow. So I hope the message is there. Don't be complacent. Uh, we, we definitely feel that the market is starting to unravel. It's been a light volume. Will it go down? Hey, maybe the Fed says free money forever and don't worry about it. And we don't care about inflation. Your money is safe. Don't worry about it. Inflation, rising cost of food and energy. And just because copper went down a little bit, don't worry about it. Listen, that's possible. We've been under quantitative easing since 2007 with Ben Bernanke's act. So free money for everyone. What the hell? It could continue. But why not, if you're in equities, have some protection in the form of some insurance, some out of the money, because uh, put spreads for very small amount of money. That's where, if you've made money this year, throw some health insurance your way. That's all I'm saying. Thanks for listening. And I hope you found this information um, at least eye-opening as to how many stocks are actually in already a weakening and sectors in a weakening condition. Thanks again, everybody.